Have you ever found yourself pretending that you are interested in things that deep down you know you're not really interested in? Or that you have certain technical skills that you just don't? Or in any other way you've been dishonest about what you actually want from your job, your career or for your life in general? Yeah, sometimes as developers we can be a bit dishonest to ourselves and to other people. I was a Java developer for 13 years. I only thought there was one way to do software development. Writing Java code, building backend APIs and doing so within a job. I never really felt like I was giving the value that I had to give to the world. And in some ways, I was stuck in that career without seeing a way out. Fast forward to today and I realized that working in a job is only one way to share your value as a software developer. And now I've also made money through selling online courses, ebooks, freelancing, earning advertising revenue and even landing coaching clients. And if I was to summarize this switch I made in my mind, it was that I decided to turn software development into a lifelong project. Because I think a lot of developers, when they start out, they just think about landing a job, getting a monthly paycheck and they'll pretty much do anything to get that. They'll learn any language, they'll work with any framework, and they'll basically accept any terms and conditions on a contract that an employer might give them. I was exactly the same when I first started applying to jobs, and the only reason I was applying to Java jobs is because that's what they taught us in my computer science degree. But I remember going to one particular interview where the interviewer surprised me with a question about which version of Java I'd been using. And although this is a basic question, at the time, I just had no idea. I'd only been using Java to complete the coursework that I'd been assigned. And outside of that, I didn't really have any special interest in the language. Should have been a big warning sign, but instead I swatted up on any possible question that an interviewer might ask me about Java and eventually landed a job through sheer numbers. The fact is that we've all got different personalities, different interests, and are motivated by different things. If you don't stop to ask yourself what those are for you, it's likely that you're gonna end up following a path that worked for somebody else, but isn't gonna to lead to that sense of fulfillment that you're looking for. Well, four years ago, I quit my development job and decided to make it a lifelong project of mine of how to earn an income as an independent developer, learning any other necessary skills along the way. And now I've earned money through all of those ways that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna share with you three questions to help highlight whether the area of software development that you're getting into is actually aligned with your values. So one good question to start with is, would I do this anyway if there wasn't a boss watching over me or my paycheck didn't depend on it? And if I look back at all those back-end APIs that I wrote that were just part of a bigger system, of a bigger product, when there was a different team handling the front end, my answer to that is no. And although I enjoyed some of the technical challenges along the way, I'm much preferring the kind of development I'm doing these days, which is building full-stack applications, front-end, back-end, and database. And even though it might seem like a privileged question to ask if you'd do this even if you weren't getting a paycheck, if you actually want to turn software development into a lifelong project, Project that you do for the next 40, 50 or 60 years, it's an important one. Next question to ask is, are you really getting everything you want out of your work purely by writing code for eight hours a day? Are you actually a developer that gets sheer joy just from pushing features and building products? Or is there something missing there where you need more of a human element to get that sense of satisfaction? To put that in perspective, even though I love building my own software products, I don't think it's something I can do 40 hours a week. For me, there's something very special about connecting with other developers along the way and sharing what I've learned through this YouTube channel or through my community for software developers who want to learn the skills of growing an audience. You can check out the link in the description. The fact is that however cool you think it might be to imitate Peter Levels and try to build 12 startups in 12 months or whatever else, if that doesn't align with your personality and your attitude, actual needs as a real human being, you're just going to get burned out and it's going to end up horribly. Third question to ask is which part of the process you're doing right now could you imagine doing for the rest of your life? So maybe there's something about code itself that you think is beautiful, or maybe you're the builder type that I just mentioned, or maybe you love debugging hard problems or helping other developers understand what you know. And even though it's unrealistic to expect every minute of every day to be filled with activities we absolutely love, if you wanna turn software development into a lifelong project, there's gotta be something you enjoy doing that you can imagine doing for the rest of your life. For me right now, that's building my own projects, 
and documenting what I learn along the way by creating videos like this one. Because the fact is that if you want to follow your own path, you might not have colleagues like in a traditional job. So finding other people to share your interests and get excited about the products you're building can be key. If you want to learn more about this, I've got a free course available inside my community that'll help you publish your first video to start growing an audience. The fact is that some developers seem to slip into their ideal career by fluke. Those are normally the celebrity developers that we hear about, but what we don't hear about so much are the developers that aren't satisfied with the work that they're doing, maybe building software they don't care about in a nine to five job that they'd rather leave. All I'm saying is that rather than waiting until the end of your working days to have this realization, be honest with yourself upfront by asking the questions I just mentioned, see whether there's a way you can turn your development skills into a lifelong project not just to earn an income, but to live a life of more meaning and independence. I think that's something that every developer deserves. See you in the next one.